that was being deliberately misinformed or misinforming themselves through divine providence and uh, I'll explain, I'll, this will be explained. The situation whereby pagans and paganized groups were liable to misuse the holy name was forbidden. The Jews were subject to minority and like everyone else they were influenced by their neighbors and uh, so it wasn't enough to, to we could, can't say because other people were misusing this name or people um, or bad elements have been using misusing this name that the Jews should just continue doing their own thing because it was obvious that the Jews had to interact because of their situation with the neighboring peoples and they would too have been influenced by them therefore actions had to be taken and uh, it says in Exodus 23 you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, guiltless to take his name in vain you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. You will not be absolved. You will not be get away clean by taking this name in vain, by, taking, by, by using this name or misusing this name. And, and therefore the name had to, be, had to be hidden. The Bible had already made allowance for this from the very beginning. It had been foreseen that the use of the holy name would have to be terminated at some stage, at least temporarily. Uh, then, uh, because the usage of the name was liable to get out of hand as it had done. The Bible tells us that the Almighty revealed his name to Moses. See Exodus 3. Exodus 3, beginning from verse 13, it says, Then Moses said to you, God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel, and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Get this last, this last uh, section, this last verse, so, what we just said, This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Because these are key words. This is a key sentence, and we shall return to it. And we, we are we're told, we are told uh, later in Exodus 6 that the name, the secret name, will be known to the forefathers. It says in God's, Exodus 6, verse 2, 3, God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord, I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. It's God Almighty, and Hebrew El Shaddai, and God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, that is the tetragrammaton, the four-lettered name, I was not known to them. And so we see that the holy name was revealed to Moses for the first time. Uh, and uh, in uh, Exodus 3.15 we saw it but what, uh, when, what does the, word, the verse say the verse that we read previously Exodus 3.15 moreover God said to Moses thus you shall say to the children of Israel Lord God of your fathers the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob sent me to you this is my name forever and this is my memorial to all generations I repeat this sentence this is my name forever and this is my memorial to all generations and this expression this is my name forever Exodus 3.15 this is my name forever it says forever. That's how we read it. That's how it's translated in all the translations. But does it really say that? Does it really say forever? If you look at the Hebrew text, it says you have the letters Le Elam. Lamed Ein, Lamed Mem. Le Elam. And what does Le Elam mean? Le Elam means to be hidden. That is what Le Elam means. And why is it translated the Olam? Because the rabbis inserted a vowel point. They inserted a vowel point, oi, that makes it sound like the Olam, because the two letters, the Olam and the Elam, are similarly, are spelt very similarly. They inserted a vowel point where, they, where according to the previous, the simple meaning of the text, there was no vowel point. And they changed the meaning of the word, but they said that even though they had changed the meaning of the word, and therefore we read it as we read it, we read it as if it says forever. And remember, because of this, because of the, the rabbis, uh, carry on, uh, give us the tradition, you, you open up a Torah scroll and you see letters, you see letters and you see no vowels. And each and every uh, word can be uh, uh, pronounced in different ways, uh, depending on how you insert the vowels. And how, how do we know which word is actually there? Because we have traditions. And who carries on the, the traditions? Me, me who transmits the traditions? The rabbis. And if there is a dispute or a doubt about what the word actually says or means, then the rabbis decide if it was not for the rabbis, we would not be able to read the Bible. Without the rabbis, there is no Bible. Without the Hebrew Bible, there are no valid translations into English. The Bible was written in Hebrew, and the rabbis decide how the Hebrew Bible is to be decided. 
because they have a tradition and authority leading back to Moses from the, who wrote the Bible. And it says this in my name, to be hidden in Hebrew. But the rabbis decided that it should be read as, it, that it should be read as if it says forever. But, but they said that there's two meanings should not be, um, one meaning should not replace the other. The, 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 the written, simple written meaning was also to be applied in, circum in certain circumstances. And so we have the we have a here we have a we have you have an option. If you do not accept what the rabbis say, if you do not accept the authority of the rabbis, then you have to take the text as it is written. The simple meaning. The simple meaning says, "This is my name to be hidden." The name had under certain circumstances to be hidden according to the simple meaning. But if you accept what the rabbi, if you want to uh, uh, accept it or read, the, read it as it is commonly uh, translated, meaning the Olam, this is my name, the Olam, as the simple, as the text says in its translation, and as the rabbis say it should be read, then you, are, then you are accepting and you are basing yourself on the authority of the rabbis. If you are basing yourself on the authority of the rabbis, you should also accept their, their explanation that, that the both meanings are applicable. This is my name forever. Uh, but, and this is my name that will be hidden under certain circumstances in the future. Because that's what the rabbis say. And if you do not accept the rabbis, then it simply says, this is my name to be hidden. At all events, the name had to be hidden, or, or could have been be hidden when the, when the uh, conditions warranted the hiding. We have a Rabbi Yaakov Zubi Let Mecklenburg, a Kitab Kabbalah, a commentary on the Bible, 1839, he wrote it. I, I, uh, I like his commentary, I use it now and again. And he, on Exodus 3.15, our verse, he says, This is my name forever, or this is my name to be hidden. And this is my memorial to all generations. That's how the verse is translated. And this is my memorial to all generations. The words translated as to all generations, see, but the door, door, also be understood as saying, according to each generation. In other words, this is my name forever, but it is to be hidden in certain generations. You know, that is explicit, that is the meaning of the verse. That is what the verse says. This is my name that is to be hidden in certain generations, or according to the generation. Or this is my name forever, as how, and it, it, but nevertheless it is to be hidden. And this is what, this is the simple meaning of, of the verse, of the Hebrew. How we translate it, how, the translation that we use, that is commentary. We are not coming to propose a, a, a convoluted explanation in place of the simple meaning as found in the in the translation, we are saying that the translation is in effect a, a commentary, a convoluted commentary derived indirectly from the simple meaning, and we're just getting back to the simple meaning uh, in its wholeness, in its completeness. And uh, the, in other words, the name was meant to be hidden according to the Bible. When hiding was needed in, in Egypt, from generation to generation, if, if in a certain generation the name needed to be hidden, then it was to be done, it was to be hid. And how was this hiding to take place, you might ask. Hari, it's written down. How can you hide a word and still have it there? So, we won't go into details, but we're in very, we won't go into deep details, but you, we'll give you enough of the uh, a picture of the reality, and uh, there should be a suffice for the present. If you look at a Torah scroll, you only see the letters. As we said, you only see letters. You only see letters, mainly vowels, not vowels, sorry. You do not see most of the vowels. You actually see no vowels. You see consonants and other letters that can, may double as consonants or as vowels. Most of the vowels are not there, but even hinted at. So how do we know how, where, which, where the vowels should be? According to tradition. And uh, these were actually written down, but they written, when were they written down? When they were first written down? In about uh, 600 uh, CE. Uh, in other words, uh, after in the Common Era. Uh, 600 CE in the Dark Ages in Europe. After the end of the Roman Empire. A long, long, very not, a long, long time after the Biblical period. Not that long ago. That's when they were written down. 600 CE and uh, also going on even later, almost up until the time of the Crusades, up to about 1000 AD CE in the Common Era. And they were written down at a very late date, but all over the world, wherever you have a Jewish community, it is agreed, it is accepted that the, the, the name, that the, the, the Torah scroll should be written, should be read in a certain way, 
and the vowels should be inserted into each and every letter in a certain way. And why do they do this? Because they accept the authority of the sages who carried on the, tr the tradition from each and e generation, from generation to generation. And every every single Jewish community all over the world accepts this. And there are very, very minor variations between one uh, uh, Torah scroll and the other. And these one or two or three uh, variations that in, in hundreds of thousands of letters uh, do not reflect, uh, have no, no, no implications, uh, at least at the simple level, concerning the meaning of the words concerned. In other words, there is, uh, for practical purposes, complete unanimity, a complete agreement as to how the words should be uttered, and this has relied upon the, uh, the rabbinical authority, and without the, the rabbinical authority, this unanimity would not exist. And uh, so each and every uh, word in the Bible has, uh, uh, we have a vowels for it. We know the vowels according to tradition, except, except for the tetragrammat and except for the four-lettered word of the holy name of God. There we do not have vowel signs. We do not have vowel signs for this name. Ah, uh, but if you look at it, you look at it. You will see vowel signs. You might say you will see vowel signs, but they, they're not the vowel signs of the letter. They're not the vowel signs of the word. What happens is the name is written in the Hebrew text. It is written in the Hebrew text, written in the Torah scroll. You have this name written wherever it appears as, it, as the Torah scroll. It's written down, word for word, as it should be. Whenever they, and, uh, and uh, in the Torah scroll itself, there are no vowel signs. In the manuscripts that give us the vowel signs, when they come to this letter for the, the, the four-lettered name of God, they take the names that we use instead of, of the name. In other words, when, um, when uh, you read in the synagogue, when someone reads in the synagogue from the Torah once, once a week, on Shabbat Tot, uh, they read the whole, uh, whole section of the Bible. Also on, uh, on uh, Mondays and Thursdays they read uh, short sections of it. Uh, and they go through the whole Torah scroll in a year, uh, the, according to the prison system. And they read, uh, and whenever they come to the name of God, they use other words, they use other names, such as uh, one, one name meaning Lord. That's where we get the English uh, custom of putting the word Lord, wherever this name is found, a Hebrew word meaning Lord. Or they use, a, in certain circumstances, they use a name meaning God in Hebrew. And uh, these two names, Lord and God, each have their own vowel sign for signs. So when you get uh, manuscripts that, got, that gave us the vowel signs for the whole of the Hebrew text, when they came to the name, holy name, the, 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 the four-lettered name, they took the vowel signs from these letters. And therefore, the vowel signs do not belong to the words. And a lot of... Uh, of attempts to pronounce the name, such as the recent attempt we spoke of, attempt that we spoke about, uh, mistakenly take the vowel signs and apply them to the letters, but they're from two different words. They're not. It's not pertinent. And this is how the, 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 the correct pronunciation of the name was hidden. It was hidden in the text, in full view. And uh, just to show you the complete, we shall show you what. What we mean by taking an example, uh, taking an example by um, this, uh, let's take two different words, two different words such as we have um, the uh, these could not have been the original ones. In other words, when when you have the uh, four-lettered name in the in a manuscript. And you have underneath it the vowel signs. The vowel signs have been taken from another word. And therefore you cannot apply the vowel signs to the name of God because these are not the original vowel signs. So let's take, a, let's take two different letters, two different words. We chose at random and show how what would happen in English if we did this because what would happen in English is the same thing as would, would happen in, uh, in Hebrew. Let us take the two words been and one. And ones, been and ones, been, b e e n, b w e n, been. I have been. You shall have been. Okay, been. This word been. I have been, as in I have been. Been 
has got two uh, consonants in it, two uh, letters named called consonants, B and N. It also has a vowel, a vowel sound, E. We have B, that, and a uh, consonant, B, E, a vowel, and N, another consonant. And together we have Bean, Bean. Okay? And together we get the word Bean with the vowel signs, the vowel sign and the consonants. Let's take this other word, Ones, Ones, O-N-E-S. Uh, from the sentence, the original ones, ones, ones is pronounced as ones, ones. It has, uh, it's written O-N-E-S and it's pronounced W-O-N-S, ones. Let's take the second word, the second word, ones, O-N-E-S, ones is pronounced as, as ones, W-O-N-S. Ones. There's three consonants, W, N, and S. And there's one vowel, O. Wa, O, Ones. Ones. Uh, let us remove the vowel from Ones, leaving us uh, with uh, three consonants, W, N, S. Now, let's put in the place of the, of the, con of the vowel where we took out a Ones. To, let's put in this place a vowel that we found in Bean. The E sound. So there we get wings. Wings. Instead of ones, we get wings. Uh, and uh, this, is a, this is the point. And this is a, a minor example because uh, here we're only dealing with one substitution. Whereas in the name of the Almighty, we're, we're dealing with uh, four or five substitutions of the vowels. And then we have the combinations of the substitutions, and we also have the, the consonants change, na name changes. And uh, so we get an exponential increase in the variations and the deviations from the original. And therefore, we should be aware, and uh, we should not uh, take the name of God in vain. We should not uh, try and give God a name which is not His. We should also be careful of this, because... Uh, God forbid, it is dangerous. We saw how dangerous it was when a, a, a person was stoned for using the name in the wrong sense, in the wrong way. Do not be misled. Do not take the name of God in vain. Do not attempt to take the name of God in vain. And accept the divine providence. Ex uh, accept the commandment of the Torah, the advice of the Torah, the directions of the Torah, the directions of the Bible, because this is what we are. This is what we are. We are Israelites. The Torah is an Israelite book. It's given to the Hebraic people, and this is a message for us, expressly for the Israelite nations, and also for all of mankind, and we should heed it. And, uh, and so, this, uh, so any, all attempts to, uh, to express the name of God, the four-lettered name of God, the holy name of God, are doomed to failure, because they do not know where the vowel signs are. And some of these attempts to use the vowel signs as found in manuscripts, but these vowel signs in the, found in the manuscripts are deliberately not the ones applying to the letter, because this is how divine providence wanted it. This is how the Bible is written. If you believe in the Bible, you have to believe in the Bible, and you have to take it as it is written, and it's written there for a purpose. This is a message from the God Almighty, from the God of Israel, the God of Israel to the people of Israel, with principles applying to all of humanity, this is divine truth and it should be believed in, it has to be accepted and we should search after the truth and not deny the truth wherever we find it and we should uh, ask God Almighty to guide us and to lead us in the light, to go along the right path and to know the truth and to acknowledge it when we find it. Uh, may the Lord God of Israel bless all of us, bless all the peoples of Israel and be with us always. Thank you.